when we have all our top leaders, all our top trainers on teaching and tutoring, helping us to learn, teach, and earn residual income. My name is Bruno Leos, Ambassador with Global Wealth Trade, and tonight we have phenomenal trainers with us. I'm going to introduce our first trainer, who is none other than our second millionaire, top earner, trainer, one of our second persons in our company to get his M5 BMW just came from this phenomenal vacation with our CEO and I mean you guys could have seen what has happened in this business for these people so with no further ado I just want to welcome our top leader trainer top income earner Rennie Leon. Rennie are you on the call with us tonight Yes, yes, yes. Hello, yes. Bruno. Hello, Can you Bruno. hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? Loud and clear, Rene. Just take it away. It's all in your hands now. Well, thank you again, thank Bruno, you. for that uh, wonderful introduction. And yes, it's not easy coming back from my ten thousand uh, dollar luxury vacation. You know, the excitement out the roof. I'm still sort of uh, uh, sleeping, thinking I'm on the beaches <laughs> in Mexico. But tonight, folks, is again a very exciting training. It's actually part four of our handling objections training and again you know what you want to do is you want to uh, have the first three parts in, in today's training uh, you know being played back in your car as often as possible because once you understand how to answer any kind of question or objection this business becomes very very simple but before we get there I of course have my uh, two partners in crime our two other incredible trainers which again, I'm just fortunate to have them with me uh, on this training call because they have a wealth of experience, a wealth of knowledge, and you know they walk the talk. You know they actually uh, live, breathe, eat, sleep GWT. And our first, uh, of course, co trainer we have tonight is going to be none other than our regional ambassador, Mr. USA. They call him Mr. Lee Or Scaler, a gentleman, of course, who started building his business here in Toronto. Uh, made so much good money that he decided to fly away where it's warm, so when it gets cold in Toronto, he flies to uh, the beautiful beaches in Miami or, or goes to New York for some shopping or some cheesecake and constantly doing the business. His team is going globally, building globally. He was also with me on our incredible RA trip. I want to do a quick check-in. Do we have our Mr. Lee Orsteiner with us on the call tonight? Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, Renee uh, and Marie. It's a pleasure to be back on this um, training series with you guys for part four of handling objections and hello to all of the luxury consultants all around the world. I'm revved up for this training as we have been for the last three. We got some more great objections to tackle with you guys and you know I uh, I still wish I was on the beach in Mexico in our $10,000 <laughs> luxury vacation. Wish I was able to do this call from the beach in Mexico but um, you know, that's the beauty of this business is, you know, we can do these trainings from anywhere to anywhere all over the world. And thank you for hosting tonight, Bruno. And of course, uh, our last partner in class in tonight's training is none other than, other than our amazing diplomat, trainer, leader of the entire Calgary market. As a lady here is ripping up uh, the market with her team. It's none other than Ms. Anne-Marie Chantel. Hi, Anne-Marie. We have you on the call as well, too. Hey, hello, Renee. Yes, I'm right here. Super excited to talk about again a handling objection. This is going to be an amazing uh, call again tonight, and I'm ready to go. Okay, so I believe everyone is set to get going, to get cracking here. And again, folks, you know, uh, if there's any other objections that we haven't covered for you so far, any question that you might have gotten that you haven't gotten the answer for through our trainings, make sure you go ahead, uh, enter in your questions into the chat box below. Submit your question, and we'll be able to answer that question by the end of tonight's training. There are only about a few more handful of uh, objections left to go through, but let's get started right away here, folks. And our first objection, continuing from where we left off last week, um, is how much money have you made so far? And again, just to give you a quick reminder, folks, that sometimes questions you might receive are not, you know, some questions are actually valid questions. In other words, they're actually, you know, honest questions. They just want to know more. And sometimes some questions are sort of invalid or sort of silly questions or uh, really they're not really valid in the sense that uh, the main purpose of that question is not really the question itself. But the main purpose is to sort of, you know, give an excuse or, or sound negative. So in this case, you know, um, it could be either or. You know, how much money have you made so far? 
some people just honestly want to know uh, how much you've made. Um, in other cases, you know, it, depending on their tone, the other way this might sound is that they, you know, they don't believe that somehow this, this business, GWT, can actually make money. So uh, let me start off with, of course, uh, uh, passing the buck to our Mr. Amazing Regional Ambassador, Lior Theater. So Lior, you know, why don't you handle both situations? Uh, you know, if it's a, uh, an honest question, uh, how would the person answer that? And if it's a question where someone might be sort of, I guess, doubting the the uh, the real potential of GWT, take it away, sir. Well, thank you, Renee. And uh, you're absolutely right. You know, a lot of times people ask certain questions not because they actually want to know the answer, but they ask certain questions because of fear. And you know, sometimes fear um, uh, causes us to um, not see great opportunities and so sometimes when people say well you know how much money have you made so far it it could be fear that um, they have heard that there's companies in the world where um, you get started and you you know you don't make money because the company is a scam well you know I, I don't know why anybody would even have the thought that we're at we're, we're anywhere even close to that but sometimes, you know, people have different thoughts. And so, you know, they, this might come from the fear that, you know, they might not make money in this opportunity or that other people are not making money in this opportunity, which is obviously not true because there are lots of people making money in this opportunity. So a lot of the times we have to address the fear as just fear, all right? Um, you know, so another reason why somebody might say, well, how much money have you made? Maybe because they don't have the confidence in themselves that they could actually achieve that money or 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 to do the business as well. So fear in the company, fear in themselves is just fear, 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 and that fear is actually going to prevent them from seeing how great this opportunity is. So it's our responsibility as luxury consultants to to address that fear and to let them know that it is just fear and their question really is not valid. So, you know, one way of, ha of, of handling that kind of a question is, well, what does, what does how much money I've made have anything to do with your ability to make money with this company? All right? So, you know, because that is true. You know, you know when I got started in this company, when I first saw the, the opportunity in the tour, I did not care how much money my uplines made or how much money the person who introduced me made, I just saw that there was an opportunity to make money with this company and that I could do it. And, be, and, and I said to myself, I can do it because I had the self-confidence to be able to say to myself, I can do it. But a lot of people, they don't have that self-confidence to be able to say, I can do it. So, you know, they need to validate that through other people, right? So again, Sometimes it's necessary, sometimes it's not necessary. So you have to remind them that it doesn't matter who's making money or how much money they're making because if they got started in the opportunity, they could make much more money than their uplines. And we have many examples of people in this company who are making much more money than their uplines. And, and, and that's because of the great compensation plan that we have that rewards the people who actually take effort, who actually uh, work and who actually deserve to get paid, not just because they got started earlier, right? So that's one question to ask. Um, but if it's a valid question, if they actually want to know, you know, how much money can I make, or maybe they just want to know, you know, what's the potential? Well, then you could say, well, I've made $100,000 in retail sales, or my business has made 500000 in retail sales, or 30,000 in retail sales or a million dollars in retail sales or 10 million in retail sales, depending on where your business is, you know, my business has made this much money in retail sales and 8% of that is commissionable, all right, because that's the way that it works. <laughs> so when you say 8% of that is commissionable, now they can do the calculations in their head to figure out how much money um, you can make as a potential in this in this company, all right? Now, some people might follow that up with, well, have you received that 8%, right? So what you can then say is, well, uh, I've received some of it, or, or you could, if you haven't received some of it, if you haven't made money yet, you could say, 
Well, I, I haven't collected it all yet. And so another question they might ask after that is, well, how do you collect it? And that's where you would send them the compensation plan video and do a three-way with your upline so that we can answer any compensation plan related questions for them, okay? So now we're actually helping them to understand the business. And so sometimes it is a valid question because they just want to know, how do I make money? And so that's where we can send them the comp plan and show them this is how the, the compensation plan works. Is you, com you accumulate all of the sales volume and then 8% of that is commissionable, but you don't get it right away you know, this is how you get it. And so once you've done what you need to do in order to get it, then that money goes into your pocket. So as long as people understand that, then, you know, they understand, okay, well, this is what I need to do to make money, so let's get going, right? Because, you know, rem you know people have a job, and they know that if they go to work for a certain amount of hours, for a certain amount of days, they're going to get paid. They don't have to do any kind of calculations or, you know, there's no teams or anything like that. You know, it's very straightforward forward when you have a job. When you have a business, it's a little bit more complicated. And, you know, that's why we need to take the time to educate people to explain to them exactly how our compensation plan works. So, uh, Renee and Anne-Marie, I know you guys have some great suggestions as well. Yeah, thank you so much, David, Yor. And, uh, of course, you know, um, you know, everything you said is exactly dead on right. Uh, no, I, th I think the main thing here, guys, is just to exactly be honest. You know, if, if the question is an honest question and it doesn't have a, a odd tone to it, uh, be honest. You know, I mean, if you just join the company uh, your first few days or first the first week, hey, hey, you know, I just joined the company my first week. Um, you know, you're actually the first person I'm, I'm sharing this with, or all my clients I'm sharing this with. Um, and so it could be, well, I haven't actually made any money before because I just got started. And, and a lot of people will actually respect that because what they're looking for is just sometimes honesty if they want to see where you're at with things, right? Or it could be that you've joined for, you know, two months and you uh, choose one person and you made a wholesale profit of uh, 60 bucks. If that was the case, then share that, right? So, you know, but I think the other really cool part um, is that for those of you who have been for, in, the, in the system now, the company for a bit longer, um, you, you should have, you know, uh, perhaps productivity that's happening within your organization. That's where, again, what we were saying is look at, uh, what, you know, your, your organization. Look at how much sales volume, how much retail sales have gone through your business, and share that. So, you know, I mean, it could have been that, you know, a lot of people get started in, in this company, and they get busy, and maybe, you know, half a year, a year, or even in Rekha's case, you know, three years, uh, wasn't really doing the business, you know. So, but after three years, he had, you know, over $8 million of volume. In some cases, if it's been like, you know, nine months, he might have, you know, uh, 100, 150 people and who knows, $100,000 of volume. Whatever that is, just share it because it does show the, the power of how the business can grow, you know, while you're not even working the business. Um, but that's where you want to follow it up with what uh, Lior just said, which is to say that if you were to work the business and if you were to start applying and to build, you know, your, your, your other team, how much money is commissionable right away for you. And so, of course, the last thing you want to do here is, uh, you know, whenever you, you do have this question, you can always offer the person, hey, you know, if you actually want to meet someone uh, who's actually, you know, either made some money or made a great success with the business, why don't we give, you know, one of my my five a call? So I have a my five team who I can call upon to support me. Let's give them a call. And so sometimes what they're, what they're looking for um, is either maybe just to hear your story, or maybe they hear an actual story of someone who's actually made some money. And of course, you have an, you know, everyone has a my five. Give them a call, and there you go. And so. And the last point that I really wanted to sort of reemphasize from what you were saying was that if they are asking from a sort of a, uh, you know, um, a, a negative kind of a tone or a defending kind of a tone, what you want to say to them is, you know, well, you know, um, what I make, uh, to be honest with you, has nothing to do with how much you can make because, you know, everyone has to build their own business. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme where you can join, do nothing, and make, and make money, you know. Um, I joined, and I just wasn't really active. And, you know, again, be honest with, uh, with, with your person, right? But say again that, you know, I mean, you shouldn't look at me and assume that what I make is how much you make. You know, you have to understand the plan that's, that's in front of you, and if you do X amount of work, then, you know, Y is the, is, is the output. And so, you know, um, end of the day here, folks, I just sort of, you know, try to figure out where that person is and which angle they're asking you the question from. Um, you know, is, is it because they have a, a disbelief in themselves that they can't do for themselves? Or do they have a disbelief um, in, in the whole you know, idea of network marketing, right? So you know, we, we already covered those two things in our first training call. So 
once you figure it out, you can sort of move forward with, you know, either answering directly or, again, having that them understand that, again, just because I, you know, even for myself, just because I have made, you know, X amount of dollars doesn't guarantee that, you know, you will make the exact same kind of money. You have to apply and work the business. So, Anne-Marie, anything else you want to add there? Uh, sure. Thanks, Renee. Well, obviously, I learned a lot from you and Lior because uh, when people ask me that question, I realize right away, just like you said, there's two types of objection, right? People that have uh, no confidence in network marketing or within themselves, and like Lior and you said all the time, our job is to educate them. So when people ask me how much money I've made so far, I right away I let them know, you know, that I know how they feel because you're, you're probably wondering, you know, if people are actually making money. Uh, doing this uh, because I know for my for me I felt the same way at the beginning I was I wanted to make sure people were making money uh, but then I realized that uh, even if I were to make you know a million dollar a month uh, how would that help you you know well because we, we all have to work for our own self right at the end of the day it's your job your work that will pay not mine so um, so those are those are the type of uh, way and story that I'll bring just like exactly what you said and like Lior said and, and I just love rehearing it from you guys because it really, uh, that's what I say that's what I use it's, it's really what you make out of it so um, the, yeah. go ahead yeah I, I just want to say I love how you again you always apply the super health balance technique which we did cover in the first training because you know, some people just like to, 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 to hear that you know how they felt before so wonderful wonderful and again you know just uh, Hearing you guys share your thoughts just really gets me more, even more excited here. So, okay, well, uh, let's move on to the next objection, uh, which is um, your shipping fees are expensive. Now, uh, this one here again, um, for me, it doesn't come up very often, um, especially if you're here, sort of here in Canada or the USA. Uh, but again, you know, it might happen slightly a bit more in international borders. But again, you know, I have uh, my own amazing way to how I handle this. But let's just check in in the same order and let's see what Leo has to say. So, Leo, how would you handle this kind of a, 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 an objection or a question? Well, yeah, I don't get this uh, objection very often. But uh, you know, a lot of people they they forget that you know we are a fine luxury designer, fashion company, and jewelry company. And so, when we ship something, there has to be insurance. It has to be uh, there are duties associated with that. And so. You know, um, um, that's one thing that's good to explain to people is that the insurance and everything that has to go into the uh, shipping um, actually impacts the shipping fees, number one. Number two, it's uh, important for people to understand that, um, you know, the company does not set the shipping fees. You know, the company, this money is not going to the company. This money is going to FedEx, which is the company that we use to ship all around the world. So um, if you've ever tried to ship something with FedEx, you know, you're paying top dollar for shipping because it's 100% that it's going to get there. There's, there's insurance involved. They have a whole system. It can be shipped to any country around the world. I mean, the company can choose to use uh, cheaper, you know, companies, but, you know, how, how happy would your clients be if they didn't get their product? How happy would your clients be if the products came damaged? How product? How how happy would you be if you know you weren't able to track it or or whatever other um, uh, problems other shipping companies have? So when you work with you know the number one shipping company in the world, FedEx, you should expect to pay top dollar, and that's a good thing because we want to make sure people get our products and we want to make sure that the products get there safely and that the whole system runs smoothly, especially, you know, when you have products and that can be shipped to every country in the world, you want to make sure that you can expand your business globally. You don't want to have any limits. And so that's very important for you to explain to people so that they understand that. Um, another thing that's important for people to understand is that, you know, a lot of, products that are already located in a country, for example, if you go to a Louis Vuitton store in Australia, well, Louis Vuitton had to pay shipping to get that product to Australia. So do you think that, you know, Louis Vuitton is going to pay for that shipping? No. What they're going to do is they're going to take the cost of shipping to get that product into Australia and put it into the price of the product. 
All right. So you are paying for shipping even when you buy something at a store, wherever you're located, you just don't see the extra shipping cost. All right. So the so the only difference is that with us you see the cost and when with other companies you don't see the cost, but you're still paying for it because again, that's how business works. Other companies also have to pay shipping to get certain products into certain countries. So um, another thing that's good to explain to people is that, is that if they're looking at this opportunity as a luxury consultant or to become a luxury consultant, then, you, then what I usually say is, well, shipping's free because you pay for it, but the company actually gives you the money back, which you can use to purchase products. So you're, you're really not paying anything for shipping. You're just investing money to buy products, right? So shipping is actually free. And when you explain that to people, then, you know, it doesn't really matter to them what they pay in shipping because they're very happy that they get to use that money to buy products anyway. So uh, on, the, on to you guys. All right, Seth. Thank you for that, Leo. Amazing, amazing points there. Uh, and Marie, you want you go first. Yeah, thank Anything you. Anything else well, you want to add? Yeah, uh, the only thing I'd add uh, when I get that asked is uh, basically I'll say to people on top of what Leo just shared that we also, the company also has group shipping. So a lot of people, what they do is that they get all together and they ship more, you know, more people all together so they can save on their shipping fees. Because the rest is exactly what Lear said. Fantastic. And of course, you know, I think the, the only other point I could add to that, um, uh, again, just to reemphasize again, is that, you know, it's not like it's only our company that has shipping, right? I mean, if you were to order anything, you know, from a company, uh, you know, especially if you're shipping it overseas, you know, uh, you just already expect that shipping would be very, very expensive. You know, I, I bought a lot of things from the States, things from, you know, uh, different countries, and it's the shipping. There's also the back and duties and taxes. And so, you know, sometimes people just don't realize, uh, you know, that they might not be so experienced in shipping things, you know, worldwide. And when you explain to them, you know, that, it, it, that every company, when you order something from them, there's going to be a shipping fee, right? So it's not, it's not uh, a profit center for the company. You know, every, every company in the world loses to shipping because it's an expense that the company has to pay for. Um, but one thing that I would mention as well, that especially if it's coming from someone uh, who might be in the industry, perhaps in a different company, who is maybe comparing their shipping in the previous company to the shipping in your company, uh, what I do tell them is, aside from the worst point, which is, you know, even though right now for international shipping, you might pay, you know, 165 uh, for that shipment, let's not forget, right, that number one, that is an IA rebate, so you get all that money back um, in, 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 in dollars into your IA account for getting more products in the future. But on top of that, what I do mention is that it's not like you're in other companies, you know, especially if you're in the health and wellness, where you have to order products every single month. And what happens is that the company, the head office, is sending you products every single month. So every single month, your credit card is being charged for the shipping and all the taxes and all the and all the duty stuff. Whereas in our company, you know, most people don't order as 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 members, they don't order products every single month. You know, you might save money into your account and maybe after three months or four months or even maybe five, six months, then you might actually order the next batch, right? Because don't forget our one sixty five is for a big uh, container of full of products you can actually ship, right? So if you actually do the math here, if you take the one sixty five for the international shipping and you divide it by three months or you divide it by six months, right? In reality, you're only paying maybe about you know uh, you know 50 to you know maybe uh, you know 30 dollars um, every uh, every month for shipping, which is actually don't forget even if it's 30 dollars per day for shipping, you're actually getting the money back into your IA account. So in reality, it's actually cheaper than other other sort of opportunities, and especially if you can combine the group shipping. So usually when I have teams you know in different countries, uh, for every additional uh, um, an order that you combine together from different LCs, it's only $45. So really, you know, if you had yourself pay $165 and you had four other people sharing the $45 shipping, then in reality, you know, if you actually do the math and you add up $165 plus $45 uh, plus $45 plus $45 plus $45, plus $45 you divide that by five people, in reality, it's actually very, very inexpensive. You're paying maybe like 10 or $20 a month for shipping. So once you kind of understand uh, that um, sort of math, that group shipping really does help you save, and the fact that um, you know you do it as an IE rebate, and in reality it's actually a lot cheaper than other Amazon companies. So 
Um, that's pretty much what we say for the shipping part. Um, and hopefully that gives you enough of the answers that, that you need there. Um, and again, the key point here is that you have the IA rebate. You don't ship every single month, um, you know, and that you do have group shipping. So there we go. Okay, on to the next objection we have here, which is going to be, um, I already have a business for tax savings. I don't need another one. And uh, because I do do a lot of, I guess, tax training for the team here, uh, why don't I go ahead and start off with that, that answer. Um, basically, some people who are already self-employed, for example, they might be a realtor or an insurance agent or you know, any kind of a self-employed person, uh, they might already have tax savings. But, but to say that you don't need another business for additional tax savings isn't 100% accurate. I'll give you an example. Let's say you are a painter. So you basically paint you know, walls uh, as a self-employed business um, and you have some write-offs. But it's not like you, know, um, uh, you can get every single write-off because there's some things in GWT that you can write off um, due to the nature of GWT that you might not be able to with a painter's business. For example, you know, if you were to take a flight, a business travel, and go to Mexico, right, um, as a painter, would it make sense that you wrote off a flight to Mexico for your painting business? You know, it's very, very shady, right, because why would you go to Mexico for your painting business, right? It doesn't really add up. Whereas, of course, in GWT, we are a global international company, and the fact that you know you might travel to Mexico to expand your business actually makes sense. So the reality is that you know uh, with GWT, it can allow you to have additional write-offs that your other business potentially wouldn't have allowed you to have in the first place. Another example: Let's say someone has a car. Uh, again, the same painter business. He has a car, and you know maybe uh, you know half the time. He, he drives for personal, and the other half of the time he drives for his painting business. But let's just say that he, he decides to add on GWT as they, you know, or he, or him or her decides that GWT as an additional uh, part-time business. Well, now perhaps 50% 50, 50 of his driving was for his painting business, and now perhaps 20% was for GWT, and now 30% was for his own business, for, for his own personal use. So there's many other things that, that you can gain with, uh, with GWT that you might not be able to with other kind of companies here. So I'm not sure if uh, Lior and Marie want to add anything to that uh, before we move on to the next objection. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. I'd like go ahead, Anne Marie. Okay, thanks. Um, one of the things that I'd bring up uh, for this one is uh, you might have already a business, uh, but who do you know that don't have a business that could benefit all those tax savings? You know, beside what you just all said, Renee, because yes, traveling, you cannot take uh, any business out traveling, but with GWT, you can. You can write off your business, uh, your travel business. Uh, but, you know, this is not a business. It's not about you. This is about helping other people. And I'm sure you know a lot of people that don't have that privilege to have a business. So uh, why don't we go and help them to actually be able to benefit of having a home business? That's, uh, that's what I'd say. What about you, Lior? Yeah, basically, um, you know, just to add to what uh, Renee was saying, um, you know, that's exactly what I say. Um, you know, how would you like to be able to go to every country in the world and to be able to do business there and, you know, have some of those expenses be a tax write-off? You know, I understand that, you know, you have your own business, and I understand that, you know, you already have tax write-offs, but, you know, let's say you wanted to go to Italy uh, because you've never been to Italy. And let's say before you went to Italy, you, you know, called some people who worked at the hotel or, you know, you found some prospects there and you called them up and you scheduled a tour when you got there, right? So because you scheduled those tours before you went on your trip, well, guess what? Now your flight's a tax write-off because you're going and you're doing business there. Now your taxi and your hotel and your food. Now, if you were to do that with your current business, you probably wouldn't be able to do that. So, you know, that's 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 basically what I say. And uh, you know, it's a it's it's a great advantage that GWT offers people who already have their own businesses. Wonderful. And you know, uh, one thing that just sort of uh, came up in my, in my mind as well too is that, you know, someone might ask this question because they actually are thinking that they have another business. But I think that sometimes the person who's saying this to you might not, again, realize the potential here because what you can also say on top of everything that we've already said before, 
is, well, you know, would, would having another stream of income be helpful for you? You know, would earning an additional $500 a month, you know, in this business part-time be of a value to you? And so, you know, let's not forget as well, too, folks, that, you know, the person who's saying this, they might not have, again, realized that there's an opportunity of making a lot of money here. And for people who are already self-employed, one thing that I have found is that they are looking, you know, they, they, they are hungry, they are self-employed because they realize the potential of, of, of making a lot of money being self-employed. But in other words, they're, they're hungry for money. And so what you also don't want to forget to mention to these kind of people is, look, you know, uh, for me personally, you know, I think it always makes sense to have multiple streams of income. You know, if you're making, you know, 80 grand a year in your current business, you know, would it would it hurt to have an additional 40 grand a month, you know, from GW, uh, 40 grand a year to GWT? And all you have to do is share with other people how to have tax savings, how to get paid for wear bling, you know, how to have fun while, while wearing amazing products. Um, so let's not forget, folks, that you also want to bring it back to the fact that you can have multiple streams of income because, you know, imagine if when you retire at the age of 65, if you can have five multiple streams of income coming in to, to you, you know, whether it's real estate, maybe it's some investments, maybe it's in some stocks, and maybe it's UWT, you know, why not, right? Okay. And just to add to that, Renee, because um, you got me thinking about uh, <laughs> another thing, um, is that, you know, you know, what Renee is saying is true is that, you know, they may, they may just be looking at the business from a tax savings point of view and saying, well, you know, that's not something that I need, but, you know, they do need residual income because residual income is going to give them time freedom. So just because they have a business, you know, usually means they've bought themselves a job because they're probably spending a lot of time in that business. So, you know, that's where you could say, well, you know, if you already have um, uh, tax savings in your business, do you have residual income? And, you know, usually their answer will be no, and then that's where, you know, you can let them know the value and the benefits of this opportunity is that you get time and money um, uh, in addition to uh, having a great lifestyle. So, yeah, I think, uh, I think we hit all the points there, and uh, we should probably go on to the next one. And actually, while you were talking, you gave me another thing that <laughs> my mind to talk to. Uh, really quickly was that sometimes after that topic, they might sort of carry on by saying, well, you know, uh, they don't have much time for another business. And that's, what, again, it's very important that you tell them, again, look, you know, with this business here, you know, the, the, the amazing part about it is that you have a support team. You have a My5 who can assist you and help you in talking to your prospects even while you're busy. So, so there we go. So I think we really killed this one in, in every possible angle. So moving on to the next objection here is, um, ah, funny, funny one. Uh, when you make money, then I'll join. So um, why don't we take it away? And so Anne-Marie, let's start with you first. So when someone tells you, you know, well, Anne-Marie, you know, when, when you make money, um, then I'll join. Now, of course, you know, with Anne-Marie, you, you have uh, already made money. But let's just pretend that you're a brand new uh, member, brand new, uh, you just launched your VDN, you launched your mall, and it's your first week of business, you invite a prospect, and they say to you, well, Anne-Marie, when you make money, then I'll join. Well, how would you handle this kind of a, a question or objection? Uh, Renee, you took all the fun away. I was just going to say, okay, well, then sign here. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, it, it's true. Like, people will come and say that. When you get started, like, every now and then you'll have someone who say, you know, when you start making money, then I'll join. Uh, but then I'll, I'll ask them, you know, I'd ask them some questions because at the end of the day, it's not about me about you making money and um, uh, have you in a, you know ask them have you heard of the saying monkey see monkey do right so you know it's not when I make money it's that people will do what you do so if you did you know join now and let's work together so we can make money together instead of you waiting and then when I start making money uh, you losing out because at the end of the day uh, you know, we, we all buy jewelry, and as we all know, everybody buys online. So would it make sense to buy from you, uh, from your own virtual designer mall, instead of going to the mall, make the mall rich? And on top of that, I'm already saving for my taxes every single day, so I'm already saving big time. So it's just like making money. So why don't you do the same thing, and let's get you, let's get you started. And that's how I ended. That would be how I would end all this. Wonderful. Um, Lior, take it away, buddy. Anything you want to add to that? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, basically it's the same as the other one. It's, uh, you know, it's really a funny question. You know, when you make money, then I'll join. Well, again, what does my ability to make money have to do with your ability to make money with this company, right? It's, it's, it's two completely different things. Um, and, you know, another thing that I tell people is, you know, that, you know, I would tell people if I was new is, you know, well, well when I'm already making money, then you'll actually lose out uh, on the opportunity because you're actually going to lose a lot of money by waiting. And then they're probably going to say, well, what do you mean I'm going to lose money by, by waiting? And then you can show them how, um, you know, you know, by getting started earlier, they will benefit from other people getting started in the company after them. You can share, you know, people who waited and lost a lot of money like Sherry or, or, or other people in the company. Um, so, you know, it doesn't, it, 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 it actually really hurts them. It doesn't benefit them to wait until you make money before they get started. It actually really hurts them. And again, it's up to us to let them know what they're going to be losing by waiting so that they should get started right now. And, you know, you know, some, sometimes this is a question that, you know, people say, you know, kind of, kind of in a cheeky way, you know, it's like, well, you're not going to make money. So, um, I'm going to wait for you to not make money and then I'll prove to you that I'm right, that you can't make money with this company. Right. You know, sometimes people actually say it from that kind of a perspective. And, you know, if it's, if, if, if they are saying it like that, then don't expect that person to ever join the business because they're not somebody who is open-minded to, uh, you know, common sense, right. They're just people who, you know, maybe, maybe they've just been heard in the past and they've heard all you know, negative things from other people about other, other companies. And now, you know, they're bitter because they've been hurt by other companies or whatever it is. Right. But again, you know, it's not, you know, a lot of times it has nothing to do with the money, with, with uh, the money itself is just their belief. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe again, they don't, they don't believe in you. And, you know, again, don't, don't spend too much time trying to convince somebody um, um, who doesn't really want to be convinced, who doesn't want their questions answered because sometimes they just say these things and they're not really looking for their questions to be answered. They just want to be right. And so if you're talking to that kind of a person, then, you know, answer it, you know, in the ways that, you know, we've all recommended here, but again, don't spend your time on somebody who's not, you know, interested in taking a serious look at how great this opportunity is. Wonderful. You know, and, I think the the one sort of thing that I would really, you know, like to uh, add to this is that uh, you know, um, if someone actually said that to me, and you know, it wasn't about just knowing that you can make money as a company because I can use other people's stories, and it wasn't about anything else. You know, if, if it was really just about him and me or her and me, like they had an issue with me, I would say to them, okay, so we have a deal. Uh, the second I make my first check, you will join. Do we have a deal? Do, do we have an agreement? You know, and, and I would actually hold them accountable to that. So, you know, so John, what you're saying to me is that when I make my first check, you're going to join, right? Because you just said, when I make money, you're going to join. You'll say, yes. Yeah. So, John, uh, I want you to fill out this form. The second I, I make my first check, I'm going to call you and we're going to put you in. Because you know that you're not going to quit because one person told you, when you make money, then I'll join. You know, we're not, you know, if you've been to a president network or you understand this is a business, um, it's not about the first person saying no. It's not about the first hundred people saying no. It's about going through as many no's as it takes to get to reach a million dollar status. So you already know that just by you not, you not stopping your business and that you already know that by you moving forward in your business, you are going to eventually have a sale. Whether it's a retail sale or you're launching a new video, Make that first check, and I want you to call this person and say, John, you know what? Remember how last week you said to me that when I make my first check, that you're going to join? Well, guess what? Let's get you in, my friend. And that would be just the sweetest feeling you will ever feel, and I think that's how you can handle this objection pretty big one. Okay? So, moving along to the next one here. Uh, well, I think we're well, actually almost done here. Ah, this one here. When someone signs up, then I'll join. Okay, so this one here, I want to add one quick thing before I pass it on to our amazing co-trainers, Lior and Emery, um, is that, you know, I'll, I'll actually tell someone, look, you know, in this business, uh, what you do, other people do. So 
you know, what's going to happen here is is one of two things: is that you know, uh, is that you know, you're not going to join, and when you bring you know your people out, because usually this comes up when someone's saying to, uh, to you that you know what, when I bring someone out and and they sign up, then I'll join first. So what I tell them is that, is that one of two things will happen. Number one is that you don't sign up, you bring your guests out, and they see the business. And that guest will always ask you, well, have you joined yet? And now you have two answers. Either one, you lie about it and you say, yes, you have joined, because you know that by saying you haven't joined, it looks bad. So either you lie about it and you say you have joined, which is wrong, because we shouldn't lie at, at any point in time, right? Or number two, you be honest, you say, well, actually, I haven't joined yet. I was waiting for you to join. And now that second person, who, who the, the guest, is going to do what you just did. You know, monkey see, monkey do. They're going to follow what you So what they're going to say is, well, I don't, then in that case, if you're waiting for me to join, then I'm going to invite my own friend to come out. When they join, then I'll join. Now no one's joined the company. And my point here, folks, that I tell the person, here, you have to lead by example. Because if you haven't committed to the business and you're inviting someone else out to come to the business, and if they join, then you join, what you are telling your prospect is that you don't have confidence in this business. And what telling the prospect is that if you don't have confidence in your own business, you know, how can you possibly expect for them to join? Like, you know, if, you, if, that, if you were the one who was inviting me to the, to, to the meeting and I found out that you hadn't joined yet, what that's telling me is that you're counting on me to build your business, which is bad, or that you don't believe enough in the company and I, I will lose faith in that. So either way, it's never good to do this. And I tell the person, look, you know, if you're going to join, uh, at some point in time, you must well join now and give your people the confidence that you believe in the company. Because, you know, uh, the worst thing to do is, is to invite someone else out to, to the meeting and you haven't even committed to the business yet because that's showing lack of confidence. And again, it, that's not how you build a big business. Um, so I want to pass, uh, again, uh, this, this, this objection to our other portrayers. And Marie and Leora, take it away. Yeah, well, this is a, you know, again, this is a silly question and, and um, you know, what I, what I always tell people is, you know, you can do that. You can invite somebody to a tour if you want to, but then what's going to happen is exactly what, you know, Renee said, is that they're going to come and see the opportunity and they're going to say, well, have you gotten started? And you're going to say no. And they're going to say, well, if you don't believe in it, then why should I believe in it? You know, and then, you know, that, that never works. And so if you just give people that way of handle if you just handle the objection in that way people will understand that that's not something that ever works and um, you know they should get started and then once they get started then they're actually going to have su success so you know that's one thing but you know people have to understand also that you know if they start to do the business and invite people and they're not in you know people are going to feel their lack of excitement people are going to feel that lack of interest because when you put money into something the way that you speak to people the way that you talk to people when you have a business is completely different from you trying something just to see if it's going to work your excitement is different your energy is different and people are going to feel that your energy is different and so what i tell people is you can do that but do not expect any results you will not have any results at all because your energy is going to be different. Different. Your excitement is going to be different. You know you're not in the business. You know you're just testing it out, and people are going to feel that. So do not expect anybody to come out that way. And you know, once you say that, they really get that that's not the proper way to to do the business. That's fine. And Marie, your turn. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I just again love what everybody said so far. Uh, one of the things that I'd bring up, um, and I, I would start asking some questions, right? Like we talk on previous training about peeling the onions. Like I'd ask them, like, what do you expect? Like, what do you think people's gonna do when you invite them and they'll find out that you haven't even joined? Because people will ask you, what package are you at? And you'll say, well, I haven't joined yet. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not gonna join either, and I'm gonna see where it goes. So nobody's going to join, and how's that going to help you, right? Uh, but really, at the end of the day, where I'm, what I'm hearing is you might have some fear that people might not join, and and that's where I, now I'll bring the feel to fun. You know, I know how you feel because I feel the same way. I I didn't know, 
But what I realized is that if I don't start talking with people and start putting some time into this business, nothing else is going to happen. So what is it exactly that is stopping you right now so we can really peel that onion, right? Well, what is it right now that's stopping you from joining so we can help you? Because this company, uh, on top of being amazing, has all the training for you to become successful. So let's get you started and, um, and we'll go from, for some training so you don't have that fear that uh, people will, might not join. That's and I guess, like, you know, if they do happen to be in North America and, you know, tax benefits are applicable, then I guess, you know, I mean, why would you wait? Because by you waiting uh, till, till someone else joins, you're actually missing out on those tax savings, right? So, okay, there we go. On to the next objection we have for tonight is um, uh, kind of a funny one. Uh, why do other companies have products similar to Ferry? Um, and, you know, I guess sometimes people have seen perhaps a design of something that might look similar. Um, and I don't know about, you know, uh, Lior and Anne-Marie, but my first reaction is, well, you know, there's only so many ways you can design a watch. There's only so many ways you can design, you know, um, some things. So, you know, uh, although to me, you know, Fairy is very, very exclusive and the designs are very, very exquisite to GBT, you know, um, is, it, is, is it impossible that you might find something similar? Well, of course you will. You know, I mean, there's only so many ways to design a bag, right? So, um, but the difference here is that in GWT with Fairy and Posh and Fairy and Mosh, is you can actually get paid to wear these brands and, and promote these brands. So, uh, and Marie Lior, take it away, please. I actually, go ahead, Emery. <laughs> No, well, okay. Uh, well, just like Rene, you said, I mean, everybody loves jewelry. So if only one company was selling jewelry, uh, then we wouldn't have any different the, the, the diversity around. Uh, but there's only one company that is a designer fashion house that is actually paying people to wear uh, and promote the product. So, I mean, just like anything, I mean, you don't go there's more than one company who sells grocery. Well, how come there's not just one, right? So it's normal that when something everybody loves and likes, that there's different market out there. And, you know, these people, when they find out that they can get paid to wear it, then uh, they love it, and they love the, uh, the quality of it, and that's it. So what about what well, you know, this is actually a question that I enjoy answering because it shows people how great our company is. You know, when you start to see products out there that are similar to ours, what does that mean? That means that we are becoming the number one designer brand in the world. Well, what do you mean, Lior? Well, what I mean is why, do you, why does Hong Kong and China and, and other countries, why do they duplicate products of some of the largest top designer countries in the world because they're very popular and because they're beautiful and because people want them. So when you, when you start to see other designs out there that are similar to ours, what does that mean? That means people are copying our products because they're so beautiful, because they're so unique, because they've never seen anything like that before. What does that mean? That, that means that we're becoming a top luxury designer brand. And that, that means we're becoming the number one designer luxury brand in the world because people only copy something if it's incredible. People only copy something if it's wanted by other people. So obviously our products are beautiful, incredible, and wanted by other people. So now people are starting to copy us. You know, a lot of people don't know that Global Wealth Trade was actually the first company in the world that started to experiment and make jewelry out of tungsten. And then after Global Wealth Trade started to use tungsten in different jewelry designs, other companies started to come out. And, and, and now a lot of people are doing that. But who was the first? Well, we were the first ones to actually start to come out with the type of tungsten that we have. And so, you know, even though other, other companies might have similar designs to us, there's one thing that they will never have, and that's the quality that we have. You can copy a design, but you can't copy quality, especially if you're copying, right? If you're copying, you're, you're doing it very cheaply so that you can make a lot of profits, 
um, and you don't you, you probably don't have the money to do the kind of research and development that global wealth trade has you don't have the kind of money to do the craftsmanship that we have you don't have the money to do the warranties that we have the quality you know all of that so you know if you want to buy another product that looks similar to what we have because somebody copied the company, you can do that. Just don't expect to receive the quality, the warranty, and everything that this company has. So, you know, that's what I usually tell people. A very good point there, though, because in reality, you know, when someone to the team has a lot in actuality, no one else has anything similar to us because no one else has Nike Share Gold, no one else has Nike Share Display, no one else has, you know, our level of, of, of designs of bags and the quality on the bag. No one else has the brand fairy. So no one else has any similar to us because no one else has fairy. So there we go. Um, and moving on to the next objection we have for tonight um, is why is GWT not on the DSA? Now, this question, you know, we don't get very often. And in reality, it's, 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 when people actually understand, uh, you know, what the DSA really is and what they sort of, I mean, how they actually function as an organization, you know, the DSA is not some sort of a government-run, you know, organization. It's actually, you know, just a community of people uh, who found a great way to, you know, basically make some money. So I know that, you know, Lior and myself, we, we, we dealt with this a few times now. Um, but why don't you go ahead, Lior, and share with, you know, with the audience first, you know, how you'd handle this, and I'll add some points after it, if anything else. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I do, I do get this question, you know, maybe once every six months or so. Um, you know, the DSA is the Direct Sales Association, and there are companies that are part of the DSA. So some people say, well, you know, since there's companies that are part of the DSA, how come you guys are not part of the DSA? Well, there's good reasons for that. First of all, um, you know, the DSA works with uh, direct sales companies and governments of countries around the world to, in order to help uh, direct sales companies to get their products approved for sale and for shipment to other companies, to, to other countries. All right, so, you know, companies need the help of the direct sales to get their products approved for sale all, all over the world. But, you know, the beautiful thing about GWT is we don't need that approval because our products are already pre-approved in every single country around the world, all right? So if our products are already pre-approved and in every country around the world, why do we need to become part of the DSA? We don't need to become part of the DSA, all right? Well, some people say, well, if you become a part of the, DTA, of, of the DSA, then, then that brings up your credibility and, and, and you're going to look like a better company. Well, that's the silliest thing that I've ever heard because so many companies have become part of the DSA and have actually been shut down by the government for being illegal pyramid schemes. So, you know, it has, being a part of the DSA doesn't bring up your credibility or anything because we know many companies have been shut down who were part of the DSA. So, you know, it doesn't do anything for us because we're already the number one company in the world and we don't need you know, anybody to bring up our credibility because we're already the best, all right? Um, another thing with the DSA is that you actually have to pay the DSA a percentage of your sales just to be part of the DSA. So Ramin can say, okay, well, I'm going to take money away from the compensation plan. I'm going to stop paying people so much money and use that money uh, to give it to the DSA just to say that we're part of the DSA. Well, obviously you would say, no, I don't want to become part of the DSA because you would much rather have that money come into your pocket, all right? And so, again, our CEO and founder, Ramin Mazgarlu, always is thinking about how he can pay the luxury consultants first and not spend money where it's not necessary. And, you know, the DSA is not something that's necessary for us. I mean, other companies need it because they don't have products that are pre-approved in other countries, but we don't need it. So um, that's, that's, that's what I would answer. And, you know, uh, one thing I want to add to that as well, uh, you know, again, every point get on there, Lior, is that, you know, uh, it's not like you, you pay uh, a one-time, uh, uh, you know, it's not like per, per, per company. You know, if your company launches in different countries around the world, you know, every country might have their own DSA. So what's going to happen is you're not just paying one percentage of your sales to just one country. You're paying it to every single country. So imagine if, if, if you 
know, again, it's not even required. It's not at all beneficial to the company to do this, but if they actually did it, do this, they're paying fees to every single country who would have to go in and be in. And we are already in 86 countries uh, without being on the DSA. So imagine if we decided to do that, how much money the company would be just be spending instead of going to our pocket. They're giving it to these companies that we are already in that country doing this already. And so, you know, again, um, uh, what, 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 again, you are said there is that, you know, the DSA has nothing to do with credibility. Uh, it's just an organization where, you know, they basically try to, you know, need to pay a fee to be part of it. In reality, you know, it's, it's not like a guarantee that the company will be good, right? And the last thing to add is, you know, what's important to me is because the, the DSA doesn't even really regulate or look at, you know, your company. They don't really look at, you know, uh, very details of the plan and they, they don't do investigations to see if, if anything is, if issues going on. And no consumers can actually report to the DSA about, you know, the service of the company. So what I look at is the BBB, which is the Better Business Bureau. And if you go in, you know, if you go to BBB.org and you can look up Global Wealth Trade, you will find that, you know, uh, every company starts off with a C minus ranking. Global Wealth Trade has an A plus ranking on the BBB. And the BBB is a place where everyday consumers, you, me, anyone, can go onto the, to the BBB. And, and if we have an issue with a company, you can file a complaint. So, you know, Microsoft has, I think, over like 13,000 complaints uh, from, from their customers. Only 3,000 are actually closed. They have so many un, unanswered cases. Whereas with GWT, we have an A plus ranking, and other companies have an F minus ranking. We have an A plus ranking plus. We only ever had, I think, two um, sort of, I guess, uh, uh, questions coming in about the company that were addressed over like six years ago. So we have had never had any complaint at all about this company. And to me, that BBB is actually a government-run organization, and that's the most credible thing you can look at when it comes to is this company good. So again, this has nothing to do with how good or bad a company is. It's just you know people don't understand what the DSA is there for. They do more stats. They look at different. They try to run stats for for people. So what's really more important is the fact that again, do all the the um, uh, uh, the company accolades. So talk about American Business Journal, Canadian Business Journal, you know, Canadian Jeweler, you know, um, you know, GIA, IGI. So we have so much third-party credibility that we don't need the DSA to try to look better. We have so much credibility from third-party companies that other companies in direct sales don't even have that. So we just don't need that. So that's pretty much what I would cover. Um, and maybe you guys you want to add to that really quickly, or should we go to the next one? Uh, actually, I, I never had I never had that question asked. So you... <laughs> well, there you go, folks. It's not very often you actually get this question. So moving on to the next objection here. Um, oh, I think we're actually done with the objections. But um, one thing I did want to add is that sometimes when you're doing a, a, a closing session with your prospect. You'll find that they're just sort of sitting there, and you're kind of talking. You're just trying to get something from them. They're just sitting there, and they're not really being responsive to, you know, uh, or not being very, very interactive with you. So, you know, and, and even though I'm saying all these great things about why going now and all this great stuff, they're just not really, you know, saying much. So what I do is I get very, very blunt. I would actually ask, I would actually tell them, you know, so if there was anything holding you back, what would one of the main reasons be? Because, you know, obviously they're there. They're listening to me because they have interest because they're still there, uh, but they're not saying much. And what you'll find out is that you'll find out exactly what it is that they need to address to move on to the signing of the business, right, and launching the video mall. And you know, there's one really what was a funny situation where um, I was doing a meeting and, you know, we had about three or four people talking to this one prospect about, of course, you know, launching their mall, and, you know, and they just weren't really responsive. So I just said to them, I said, well, you know, uh, if there's one thing that's holding you back, what would that one thing be? And the person said to me, well, actually, um, I was just looking uh, for the application form uh, on, on how to get started. And so the whole time that you know, we're talking to the person, they already wanted to sign up, but they didn't know how to sign up, right? So sometimes you don't really know what they're thinking. So just be direct, you'll be honest. And you'll find that this question is such a powerful question because it can help you find out exactly what it is that they need to move on to the next step here. Okay, so now we do have um, some questions that actually came in uh, during our, our training here. So let me try to answer the additional objections here um, really quickly here. But um, 
let's see here. So uh, one objection that came in is um, how come there aren't more millionaires or even 10K club income earners with this company? And so, you know, uh, the way I would quickly answer that objection there, uh, Bruno, is that, you know, our company, again, we covered this before, um, the target was, was never to become the next biggest Amway or the next biggest Avon, you know. The, car, the, the company's target was to become the next world's largest designer brand, bigger than Hermes and Chanel and Prada Gucci and LV. So in order to do that, the company had to, again, uh, take their time and, and, and strongly and carefully create the products they have today. And that's why over nine years, no one else has the product that we have and we don't have any other competitors. So because of that, of course, we're going to have um, um, slower growth than other companies. But the good thing is that in our company, you don't have to have a lot of people to make a lot of money. You know, for example, for myself, you know, when I had 4,000 people in my organization, I had to pass a million dollars earnings. In any other company, you'd have to have over 300,000 people minimum to get to a million dollars. And so the reality is that, you know, is that if you look at, again, the size of the four companies, you know, we, you know other companies might have you know, half, you know, uh, 500,000 people and have, like, let's say, one millionaire. You know, whereas in our company, we only have currently about 25,000, you know, total mall launches, and a lot of that might also be the VIP members. So let's call it about 18,000 actual VDM owners, and we have two millionaires and a lot of people in the 10K club range. So when people realize that, you know, people don't realize sometimes that we don't have, you know, the, the million dollar, uh, the million people um, leading the company, they only realize that, wow, we only have about 25,000 ish people. They realize that in, in reality, we have created more millionaires with fewer numbers of BDM owners than any other company in the world. Okay, so uh, I guess I think I'll add to that, Leo or Anne Marie, for that particular objection. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's uh, that's 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 something that um, you know I don't hear very often, but um, you know, sometimes people don't understand that you know when they hear about other companies and when they hear you know, you know, sometimes in other companies people say, well, we have this many millionaires and we have this many things. Well, you know, a lot of times they're not being honest. A lot of times they're just, you know, saying, you know, how many millions of dollars of volume they've made or, you know, we, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't, we, we don't really know whether that company is being honest or not. Right. But what we do know is that in GWT, everything is done in the interests of, the um, luxury consultants and we always do things honestly and fairly and so you know there will be a point in time where there will be hundreds of millionaires in the company and you know a thousand millionaires in the company that time will come right so you know again I always go back to the Apple example you know Apple again people who joined Apple you know you know look at the stock market right there are some people who buy stocks and because of the stock they make a lot of money, but then they lose that money the next day, right? The stock went up a lot, and then the stock went down, and then people lost a lot of money. Well, look at Apple. Look at all the people who invested in Apple when it first came out. They, they, they waited until the company was doing, you know, through all the rough periods of the company, through all the growing pains, when the company was growing and learning and doing all those things. But those people... They didn't look at all the other stocks that were going up and down and, you know, at all the other people who were making money and then losing money. They didn't look at that. They knew that when you're with a company that's in it for the long term, there will come a time where you will be able to benefit from that. And not only will you benefit from that, but you'll be able to keep all of the earnings that you make and it's not just going to disappear because the company is bad. And so Apple has been here for the long haul. And so because of the people who invested in Apple in the beginning and who were willing to wait until, you know, they, uh, you know, the, the company became one of the largest companies in the world, bigger than Exxon Mobile. Now those people who invested in those stocks at the beginning, now they're multi, multi, multi millionaires and Apple continues to grow. And as Apple continues to grow, those people's shares continue to grow and they continue to keep making money. Well, you know, what do you think is going to happen in your business when you continue to build it in global wealth trade, when they come out with clothes and furniture and cars and luggage and 
you know, when they become the number one designer brand in the world, what do you think is going to happen to your paycheck, right? So again, don't get distracted by other people making claims that are not true or, you know, by, by thinking that the grass is greener on, on the other side because the grass is never greener on the other side. The grass is only always greener wherever you water it. So focus on your GWT business and, you know, make sure that you build it properly for the long term and, you know, you will be one of those next millionaires. Wonderful. And, you know, uh, we have a few more objections popping up here, so I want to try to answer as many as possible. Um, the next one here uh, is, I am really interested but unemployed and no money to join but no lots of friends. So, you know, really quickly there, um, you know, uh, the truth is that people have the money. Uh, you know, for example, if, if I, you know, if, if I talk to that person who's telling you they have no money and, you know, I tell them, hey, you know what, um, I can sell you a house, a million dollar house, all you have to pay is a $3,000 to, to own a million dollar house, can you find me $3,000? They will for sure find that $3,000. So the reality is, is that, you know, this goes back to the, I think the, the first or second training uh, in this series where we talked about having no time or no money. You definitely want to talk to uh, um, and go and review that video. I don't want to go into that double again. But again, people have the money. You know, who doesn't have a dollar today? You know, for the retail to get started. So I don't want to go into that uh, one again. We do have that one already answered in I think the first or second video uh, in the series. Um, one thing that someone wants to add is that that um, you know uh, they like to to ask. Um, you know, do you think that the problem was the company or was it maybe not the right timing for you or your friend? So basically, it's one of those kind of uh, things you can say when someone, you know, says to you that they have a disbelief of or they had a bad experience in MLM. And uh, we did cover this again before in our, our third video, which is that, you know, uh, you can ask them, do you think the problem why you made no money was, was, uh, was it because of you or was it because of uh, something else, right? So I thank you very much for that, Darcy. Um, Bruno has another one coming in saying, well, how come there aren't more well-known industry leaders associated with GWT? Um, I can answer that one really quickly. Very simple, uh, Bruno, is that in our company, we don't pay people to join. Um, in other companies, what's happening right now in the MLM industry or the brick industry is that it's such uh, a red ocean. It's, it's like a blood blast. You know, people can't sustain their income in any of the other companies. And so what's happening right now is that, you know, back in, maybe like 40 years ago, uh, it might be rare to hear of a deal. You know, someone gets a big million dollar deal, you know, they move from one company to that company, and you know, it's a very, very special kind of story. But if you notice recently in the last two years, you know, you're constantly hearing stories of people jumping companies. You know, people are jumping from one to the next. And I'm constantly hearing about deals. In fact, a lot of our people in GWT have received, um, you know, offers from other companies to join those companies and to bring the teams over, you know, and that's how desperate these other companies are because they can't, you know, because they're they're you know, they're selling the same kind of product, the same kind of vitamins or juice or coffee or makeup or whatever it is, they can't, you know, naturally attract leaders because they're selling the same kind of thing. So what's happening today in in the direct sales industry is that people in the companies have to pay other leaders to join the companies. And but again, you know, the one thing that we don't believe in this industry, especially from our CEO. Mr. Rumi Mazgalu is in faking it. You know, we don't believe that, you know, uh, because, you know, if we paid a leader to join our company, we could do that, but is it real? You know, is what they're doing duplicatable? Because now they're saying on stage that they made all this money, but it wasn't even real. So the reality is that, you know, um, to me, you know, uh, Bruno, um, a leader is someone who has been able to build a business in multi-level marketing and direct selling and have it sustained. You know, someone who's built, uh, you know, a big paycheck in direct sales, but now is not doing that same company, to me, that is not a leader because they have not found a company where they can show other people on how to create a long-term passive income. Because, you know, all of you guys on the call tonight, you're not here to make a one-time check, right? You're here to make long-term passive income. And so, you know, the reality is that there are very, very few, you know, uh, when you hear of industry leaders, be very wary of that, you know, because a lot of people that I, I, even I know you know, who were once called leaders are no longer in that company or they got paid to join these companies here. So um, anything you want to add to that, Leo or Anne-Marie? Um, you know, I mean, and, you know, in, in a lot of situations for a lot of people, 
um, I actually, you know, asked this question to somebody who's very well known in this industry. Um, I said to them, you know, how come, um, you know, more, more well-known leaders haven't joined this company? And his simple answer was because they don't know about the company. You'll be surprised at how many people do not even know about global wealth trade. I mean, you call some of the most well-respected, well-known, uh, you know, people in this industry, they have not heard of the company. So that's actually an opportunity for not only you, but every single person on this phone call to actually go out there and make sure that all of these people in the industry know about the company so that, you know, they can get started with us. And then once, you know, that happens, then, you know, your business is going to increase and you're going to see a lot of things happening. So, you know, use that as an opportunity to tell every single person that, you know, Wonderful. Um, Emery, anything you want to add to that really quickly? or? Um, no, not really, actually. You guys really cover it up very well. Okay, wonderful. So um, another one that just came in, uh, I think this is our, is our second and last one, or it's actually our last one, is um, can you explain what the difference is between a pyramid scheme and what you are doing? Why is it illegal? So um, we did cover the, the pyramid objection, I believe, in the very first training video. Um, but can you explain what the difference is between a pyramid scheme and what you're doing? Why is it illegal? So again, we, we did address how to answer the question about a pyramid scheme. Um, and so well, I, don't I mean, know. yeah, just just like really simply, the difference between an illegal pyramid scheme and every other company is in an illegal pyramid scheme, people are getting paid from money that people are paying to get started in the pyramid scheme. So there's no product and there's no service being sold. That's how you know that it's an illegal pyramid scheme is when there's no product, no service, you pay and somebody else gets paid. That's illegal. Obviously we have, you know, we have, you know, beautiful products. And so, you know, other companies also have products or services. So if you want to know the difference between an illegal company and legal company, is there a product or service being sold really simple? And again, we've been up for nine years, and that's just, uh, you know, uh, whatever you're thinking of is absolutely not what you're looking at over here. So, and that actually covers the last objection we have for tonight. Uh, we do have a lot of comments coming in from different people for the excellent training. I know thanks for the insight into how to go in and what deal with objections. We are so stoked to the billion. Um, and there's there a question coming in, where are the other parts of the train located? Where can we find them? If you go to www.ourgwt.com. Again, that's www.ourgwt.com. On the left-hand side, there's actually a list of training topics by alphabetical order. If you go to H for handling objections, you will find part one, two, and three, and after tonight, you will find part four as well, too. So there we have it, and it is a bit past our 10, 15 p.m. Uh, sort of end time. And I want to close the call for now. Again, I just want to give a very special thanks to our amazing host for tonight, Mr. Bruno. Uh, thank you so much for that amazing introduction. And, of course, to our amazing super trainers, uh, Leo Taylor and Anne Chappelle. Thank you guys for the call tonight. Uh, any last words from you guys? No, I just want to say thank you, um, Renee and Anne-Marie, for uh, joining me the last, these last four weeks. I think we uh, tackled a lot of objections for people, I think, after this series. Um, you know, you guys should, you know, every single person on this call should listen to these four parts over and over and over again. And, you know, something that I mentioned on uh, last week's uh, training is that you can go to listen to youtube.com and you could actually download all of these four videos into MP3s, put them on your fault phone, put them on a CD and listen to it in your car while you're in traffic, listen to it at the gym while you're working out, um, you know, listen to it at work when you're supposed to be working, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> you know, you know, just, just repetition, make sure that, you know, anytime somebody gives you one of these objections, make sure that the answers that we gave roll off the, you know, the tip of your, your, your tongue. You want people to know that you're confident about the business. You want people to feel that you have the answers and you want to be self-sufficient. If you memorize all of these four parts, you will be self-sufficient and you will start to see people joining your business and your team growing all around the world and you will be having the results that you want to have. You know, the most successful people 
in this company uh, were the best students, and the best students become great leaders. And so you have to be a good student. You have to study it, memorize it, learn it, and then practice it. That's how you become a top earner in this company, and that's how you become good at anything. It's just repetition and practice, and you will become the next million-dollar earner of the company. So thank you, Bruno, for hosting tonight. Thank you, Renee and Anne-Marie, for um, you know being my partners on this uh, objection handling series. And thank you to every single person who joined us for these four parts. Um, we hope that it was valuable to you, and you know nothing would make us happier. You know the way that you can show your appreciation for us taking the time to do these webinars for you is to use this knowledge to make yourself lots and lots of money and have a successful business, and then share how how these trainings uh, impacted your business. You know, share in the GWT family group. Send us emails. We love to hear. You know, when people say to us, you know, because of what you said on the webinar, I used it, and this is the result. I love to hear that kind of stuff because you know it makes makes me more. Um, inspired to keep wanting to do these webinars for everybody. So, you know, use the information, make a difference in your business, and share with us what you did. So I'll have a great morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you guys are in the world. And marie anything you want to say quickly? Definitely. Thank you very much. Um, I also want to thank Bruno, Rene, and uh, Lior for allowing me to be part of this uh, wonderful part, and uh, to you to be able to be here and listen to this. And uh, exactly like Lior said, you know, it's all about repetition. So go out there. Now you have tools in your toolbox that you can open and go out and practice. So have fun with it and ask as many questions as you need at any time. Uh, but listen to this and go over and over every single day if you can because that's how we all go to the top together. So thank you for being, uh, for allowing me here. Thank you for being here this morning, this evening, or this afternoon, wherever you are. So thank you very much. Alrighty, folks, and the one last comment that just came in is that uh, thank you for the great training. See you at the top to the billions and Tanya Martin. And with that being said, folks, have yourself a wonderful evening. Of course, get back busy, do those chores, do those retail sales, and of course, have yourself a wonderful, wonderful day, evening, night. Until then, to the billion. Good night, everybody. To the billion. Good night.